a very important concept in an equilibrium which we need to uh, know thoroughly is common eye effect <clears throat> most of the uh, quantitative uh, uh, and sorry qualitative analysis of inorganic chemistry uh, is based on this common eye effect now uh, let us consider an electrolyte ba okay now that ionizes to be plus and a minus so its equilibrium constant can be written by this expression now suppose we have another electrolyte in we add another electrolyte bc a, a strong electrolyte bc is added to ba now bc also ionizes to b plus and c minus bc is a, since it's a strong electrolyte it will ionize completely to b plus and c minus now what happens when you add BC to BA, BA is uh, an electrolyte, it's, it, it, uh, there is an uh, equilibrium existing between the ions and the unionized BA. So it's a sort of, it's not very strong. But BC is strong, it completely ionizes. So the, suddenly there will be, when you add BC, there will be an increase in the uh, B plus concentration of B plus. Now this will alter the equilibrium uh, of the system. Okay, since we need K to be cons K is a constant, so uh, there will be a momentary alteration of uh, the equilibrium constant. Now to maintain the equilibrium constant K, what happens? The uh, ionization of BA will be suppressed okay so what we can uh, what happens here is B plus increases right when BC is added the concentration of B plus increases so to uh, make the uh, K value constant what we can do is the what will happen is the A minus ion concentration decreases how will the A minus ion concentration decrease only when BA does not ionize? So the ionization of BA is suppressed. Okay, or dissociation of BA is suppressed. So when you add a strong electrolyte to another electrolyte, the ionization of the weak electrolyte is suppressed. That is called common ion effect. Remember, they're both the weak electrolyte and strong electrolyte will be having a common ion. So, common ion effect is a suppression of the ionization of the weak electrolyte on adding a strong electrolyte containing a common ion in both. So, when you add B, a strong electrolyte BC to weak electrolyte BA, the ionization of BA is suppressed. That is common ion effect. Now let us take another example, few examples and see. Take acetic acid. Acetic acid ionizes to acetate ion and H3O plus in water. Acetic acid we know is a weak electrolyte. It will ionize only uh, partially. Now when you add a strong electrolyte salt, a strong salt, sodium acetate, to it sodium acetate will completely ionize to acetate ion and Na plus so in order to maintain the equilibrium con uh, constant constant so what happens the ionization of acetic acid is suppressed similarly you take ammonium hydroxide ammonium ion and OH minus will be formed and you add ammonium chloride to it the, hydro, uh, the ionization of ammonium hydroxide will be suppressed, the common ion being ammonium. So this is functioning based on Le Chatelier's principle. Look, the common ion effect is explained on the basis of Le Chatelier's principle. So what's happening? The equilibrium shifts in the direction in which the added ammonium ion or the common ion is used, to, thereby suppressing the uh, a dissociation okay so the equilibrium shift so when a common ion is formed of, of uh, added NH4 plus is added the equilibrium shifts in such a way that the uh, excess ammonium ion formation is uh, 
leveled or you can say nullified that's how was it happening the ammonium uh, ammonium hydroxide ionization is suppressed so that is common ion effects it's based on Le Chatelet's principle now based on this you can uh, explain another factor i mean based on common ion effect and also solubility product we can explain certain chemical reactions now let us see what is solubility product now so if we have a sparingly soluble salt say like silver chloride okay so it, dis it dissociates uh, incompletely some amount of silver chloride will be for coming uh, forming ions okay so uh, a small portion of it will go into a form of saturated solution so an equilibrium will be set up between the undissolved uh, silver chloride and the ions of it and on applying the, the equilibrium constant laws of equilib chemical equilibrium the equilibrium constant k will be a g concentration of the ions divided by the concentration of the salt and you can put it as rearrange it as k into a g c l equal to a g plus concentration of a g plus into concentration of c l minus this is the uh, i mean the uh, product of the uh, ionization constant and the concentration of the uh, salt we can put it as another constant ksp which is equal to the product of the ions now ksp is called the solubility product so solubility product is nothing but the concentration of the ion product of the concentration of the ions of the sparingly soluble salt Okay, it is a product of the molar concentration of its ion. This solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt is the product of the uh, molar concentration of its ion in a saturated solution. Now, for uh, in general, if we take a general expression for a general uh, salt, BMAN, then its KSP, the solubility product, will be the concentration of the cation raised to the coefficient uh, stoichiometric coefficient of the cation and then uh, uh, concentration of the anion uh, raised to the uh, stoichiometric coefficient of the anion so for different uh, uh, salt we can write the ksp like this say for example calcium fluoride you can write it as ksp equal to ca2 plus into f minus to the power of 2 because the stoichiometric coefficient of fluoride is 2 for PBCl2, it will be KSP will be equal to concentration of product of concentration of PB2 plus and Cl minus to the power of 2. For calcium phosphate, it will be uh, uh, cal the concentration of calcium ion will be raised to 3 and phosphate ion to the to raised to 2. So, this is the way we write the KSP values for various sparingly soluble salt. Now, what are the applications of the solubility product? You can determine the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt. You can predict the precipitation reactions. You can uh, you, you use this solubility product concept in inorganic quantitative analysis. Sorry, qualitative analysis. Now, let us discuss about how do we determine the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt. Now consider the salt BMAN general equation. It will ionize to MB to the power of N plus and NA to the power of M minus. And let its concentration or the, if S is the solubility of the substance, if S is the solubility of the salt, the concentration of cation and anion will be MS moles per liter and NS moles per liter. Okay. And the solubility product will be equal to or will can be written uh, in this form okay b n plus to the power of m into concentration of a m minus to the power of n putting in the concentration terms m s and n s you get the uh, solubility product expression like this okay rearranging them okay m s to the power of n and n s to the power of n you can rearrange it and uh, finally the expression for the solubility s will be equal to the 
root of uh, m plus nth root of ksp by m raised to m into n raised to n moles per liter. So the unit of solubility is moles per liter. Remember this expression. Okay. Uh, now, if m is the molar mass of the substance, then the solubility is uh, uh, then the solubility in grams per liter is given as S1 equal to solubility into m. Okay, so solubility into molar mass will be the uh, solubility in grams per liter. And from the knowledge of the solubility product, the solubility uh, solubility product Ksp, the solubility of sparingly soluble salt can be calculated. So you can get S1. You can get the value of S and you can, if you have Ksp value, then you can easily calculate S1. So that's one application of uh, solubility product. Another one is the predicting the precipitation reactions. Now this is done uh, based on the concept that the product of the molar concentration of the constituent ions of substance present in a solution is called the ionic product, QP. Okay, so uh, the the precipitation of an ionic substance from solution occurs when the ionic product is more than the solubility product. Ionic product is nothing but the product of the molar concentration of the constituent ions. So if QP is greater than uh, or sorry if QP is less than KSP that is if solubility product is uh, less than uh, the I'm sorry, solubility product is more than the ionic product. The solution is an unsaturated solution. There will not be any precipitation. If QP is equal to KSP, then it is a saturated solution. And if QP is greater than KSP, then it is a supersaturated solution. Precipitation happens there. So if the ionic product is greater than the solubility product, then there will be precipitation. So when QP exceeds KSP, precipitation occurs. So that is uh, how, you, if you can calculate the, uh, compare the values of QP and KSP, um, the uh, ionic product and the solubility product, we can say whether the particular ion, will there, there will be precipitation or not. All right. Another factor, another application is in inorganic qualitative analysis, the salt analysis which we do. Now if we have uh, salt, the salt analysis is based on selective precipitation. Okay, and this selective precipitation makes use of solubility product and ionic, no, sorry, common ion effect. Okay, and it is based on this that we uh, prepare the uh, scheme for inorganic qualitative analysis. Now it is based on that we have the group reagent. So we, you will be familiar with the qualitative analysis. You have got different group reagents for various cations. Various cations are grouped into zero group to sixth group ions and each group has got its own specific reagents. Now this has been done based on the ionic product and solubility product. Let us take the example of group 2 cations and group 4 cations. Now you know that group 2 cations, the, uh, the group reagent for group 2 is diluted Cl and H2S and the cations precipitate as sulfides. And group Four cations also precipitate itself as sulfides, but then the group reagent for group 4 are ammonium chloride, ammonium hydroxide and H2S. Now, why is that the group 4 cations are not precipitated in group 2 and vice versa? Okay, group 2 cations are not precipitated in group 4, even though both of them come out as their sulfides. Now, uh, when uh, you have H2S in the solution, it will ionize to 2H plus and S2 minus. And uh, the uh, H2S is a weak electrolyte. Along with the weak electrolyte H2S, we are adding, we have HCl, which is a strong electrolyte. 
So HCl will ionize to H plus and Cl minus. It must it completely dissociates to H plus and Cl minus. So you have a common cation H plus. So the presence of HCl will suppress the ionization of H2S. So the concentration of sulfide ion will be less here. Okay, sulfide ion concentration will be lower. Now, even the, in this low concentration of sulfide ion, the group 2 cations are uh, precipitated as a sulfide. Because here, the QP, the ionic product is greater than the solubility product. So, even at this low concentration of sulfide ions, the ionic product exceeds the solubility product for group 2. Okay, uh, or you can say that the group 2 cations, that is our copper, cadmium, etc., have got low solubility product. Hence, they are precipitated. But group 4 uh, cations are not precipitated. Group 4 cation sulfides have got high solubility product. So that's why they are not precipitated as sulfides in the presence of HCl. Alright, now we'll take another example. Uh, in uh, case of a uh, group 4, the QP is less than KSP. Now in case of uh, group 3, group 3 metal ions precipitate as their hydroxides. Okay, and the group 3 reagents are ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide. Now, uh, the ammonium hydroxide ionized to ammonium ion and OH minus ion and ammonium chloride will ionize to ammonium, chlor ammonium ion and chloride ion and presence of ammonium chloride will suppress the ionization of ammonium hydroxide. Now uh, the hydroxides of group 3 ions are precipitated here but the hydroxides of the subsequent ions, that is subsequent groups, that is group 4, group 3, 5 or group 6 are not precipitated. Okay, now here the uh, concentration of OH- is lowered in the presence of ammonium chloride. Now that's why we, uh, we uh, add more of uh, ammonium chloride in the group as the group 3 reagent. So OH- ion a concentration increases so the sub, uh, due to common ion effect the ammonium hydroxide uh, uh, sorry uh, ammonium ion concentration increases and uh, as a result the ionization of ammonium hydroxide is suppressed and OH con minus ion concentration is lower so even in this low sol uh, ionic uh, ionization I mean uh, concentration of OH minus the group 3 uh, cations are precipitated because the ionic product will be more than the solubility product for group 3 cations. So these are the examples or the applications of the knowledge of common ion effect and solubility product. Hope it's clear to you. Thank you.